were about to see ourselves in a whole new life. Here we were, the human race, just beyond hanging back. So, there. so very small, aren't we? In 1977, the United States launched a spacecraft called Voyager. As the first space probe to soar beyond the solar system, and as the farthest man-made object from Earth, Voyager is in a class by itself as the most totally cool feat of human exploration ever achieved. But its coolness is cooler still, because ultimately this mere machine gave us a priceless gift. The story is intriguing because Voyager was designed for a one-way photojournalism trek to the outer reaches of our solar system and beyond into interstellar space. After traveling at a speed of 140,000 miles per hour for 13 years, Voyager found itself, get this, 3.7 billion miles from Earth. The year was 1990 and we were about to see ourselves in a whole new light. At the request of Carl Sagan, you remember him, the famous astronomer of the time, NASA sent a message to Voyager to turn around and take one more series of photos before continuing on its journey away from our world. 60 high resolution images were snapped. Of course, we had no idea what kind of images Voyager would capture, but one of them in particular absolutely took our breath away. The stunning photo was appropriately named the pale blue dot. It was our little planet, Earth. There we were, the human race just hanging there within the enormity of space like a mere period at the end of a sentence. So tiny, almost indistinguishable. Sagan captured the reality of our smallness when he described Earth as a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Commenting on the photo with a sense of our minuscule insignificance, Sagan wrote these words, Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. We are, in fact, so, so very small, aren't we? And yet, the amazing thing is that we are so, so massively significant in the eyes of our Maker. After contemplating the enormity of space and the vastness of the universe, the ancient King David prayed these words, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? The short answer given in the Bible is that human beings are of extreme significance to God, simply and profoundly, because God loves us. We're told by the ancient prophets that God knows each one of us by name. He is perfectly aware of and totally devoted to each person with acute sensitivity like that of a mother for her child. Each morning when you first awake, the Bible says his eyes are upon your face. The first time you crack a smile, his heart leaps with delight. When your eyes tear up, he takes notice and feels your pain. And the suffering created by bad human choices pierces God's heart with agony. Here is perhaps the most significant point upon which the one true God is revealed in Jesus Christ stands distinct from our world's popular distorted pictures of God. Both Plato and Aristotle portrayed God as a kind of absolute being, completely other and transcendent, so much so that God, they suggested, must be void of any and all emotion for others. If God is perfect, the reasoning goes, he cannot possibly experience any change within himself in the form of emotional movement. 
Following the Greek lead, Western Christian thought came to characterize God with the word impassable, which simply means without pathos or without feeling. I'll never forget the day that I held my newborn son in my arms. He was so small and yet so huge in my estimation. Holding him there, I knew that I loved him beyond all self-interest. The moment he came into the world, I felt that his value transcended my own. And I knew that I would die for him if I had to. God knew the same. He knew that the moment he created the human race, that he would love us more than his own life and that if we should choose selfishness over love, it would cost him his own life to bring us back to him, his life for ours. Voyager gave us the pale blue dot, but the sacrifice of Christ on the cross gave us dark red proof of God's amazing love for us.